I, I really like it just because it it sounds cool. It's fun. But oh. like I, I think one of the issues with our opening is just like somehow it doesn't quite like in the recording. It doesn't really come out the way that like it sounds like mm. when we're listening to it initially. And I've mm. never been able to quite rectify that. So you know, it would be something maybe post editing or is it like hmm. for the stream itself? I'm not exactly sure. Like uh, sometimes I've gone through some of our older episodes and it'll sound like it's kind of underwater. Mm. Underwater. Interesting. Yeah. No, it's it's been strong. a while. I feel like since we've heard it. So uh, why don't you go ahead and hit us with it? <laughs> okay. That should only be an effect. Oh. Yeah. It's very loud. That's for sure. <laughs> it is. The metal is supposed to be loud. Hell yeah. <laughs> and welcome to Dungeons and Talk Shows, the talk show that brings you monsters, news, and homebrews. I am your host, Orion. And I am your host, Sam. Welcome back to the show. It's been a oh, long time. It has been a long time. Like, uh, oh, took like a month off, kind of uh, doing the summer stuff, family obligations. Yeah. Uh, I, I know my time's been blah, like blah, uh, blah. real hectic. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since I started working at this this theater, like, especially during the summer, oh my God, it's been crazy. Well, yeah, that, that's the summers when the blockbusters come out. Like, uh, honestly, I, I would imagine that even though uh, Hollywood has been kind of uh, flopping, it'd still be a busy time for you. Yeah, I mean, we had the what was it? The Despicable Me movie came out. Twisters ah, came out. Yeah, like, the Despicable Me. Soon. Say no more. <laughs> Kids went crazy for that. That was next week, right? Which one? The Deadpool? Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think oh, it's next yeah. week. You know, I, I'm excited if Deadpool's that. involved, I might actually go to a movie theater. You know, I'm absolutely I mean? watching this it's one. It's been a long time. Man. I'm absolutely watching this one. I, I don't even really watch movies. The last, I mean, I did see The Quiet Place, which was mm, day one, right? Yeah, yeah. Did I you me, like me, me, my girlfriend and my friend watched it all the the past ones together because I hadn't seen them yet. Yeah, it's, did you enjoy it? Yeah, they were actually really. I good. heard I love, yeah. it. I love alien movies. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be a interesting idea to run in a game kind of like a quiet place uh, type situation oh man it could be a hella crazy one shot couldn't it <laughs> yeah for sure because like everyone's oh, got to be stealthy the entire time oh that would be interesting it'll yeah, be the only crazy. ability check made throughout the entire game just stealth. <laughs> mm. stealth, yeah. uh, i feel like that'd be something that'd work very well in games like uh, call of cthulhu because like oh, your, your yeah. people i, mean, I, I imagine like, there I are imagine. creatures like that, that kind of... yeah that yeah. i feel like that would fit in just fine with a call of cthulhu one shot i yeah, haven't actually played kind of... it yeah i want to play call of cthulhu on there me too yeah I haven't actually tested the system i out. have the book want... i want to run one so bad but i also really <laughs> I... want to play in one I would oh, love to sure. play like a D and D campaign thing. You know what? I well. think maybe the next one that I do run will be a Call of Duty. Ooh. Yeah, and you know what, Sam? Uh, thank you for not addressing the the elephant in the room. Uh, as, <laughs> as many of our viewers may have noticed here, uh, I have been attacked. I have been uh, shaved, scalped. My uh, my my pride has been stolen. <laughs> nah, you got but, you got to flip it around. You got to flip it around. No, the one, of, one of the things that first brought me and you together was your, your beautiful <laughs> hair. Well, you hey, got to flip man. it around. You got to you got to go full war hammer, full mechanicus. From the moment I understood the yeah, weakness yeah. of my hair, it exactly. disgusted me. <laughs> <laughs> well, is, don't you worry, Sam. I, I, I saved. <laughs> Like I, I went full Milan. I, I, I oh, got man. that ponytail, <laughs> and like uh, you know, yeah, it's it, it. I, I'm holding on to it because you know, oh, yeah, sentimental values. Right, right. You know, you, got, you gotta treat it not not. They didn't steal it. You gotta treat it as a power up, man. Exactly. It's your Senkai boost. You're, you're Saitama now. No. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There you go. Honestly, I could probably grow it back in over the course of about two years. Nah, there is no I mean, no bigger time? empowering than being the new Saitama man. <laughs> I, I'm gonna oh. focus on my beard game now because, like, I've recently found mm. out. Like, now 
I didn't confirm this mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I don't want to shatter the the illusion. Mm -hmm. But I heard <laughs> that a beard can function as up to a fifty five percent damage reduction for your face. Because mm -hmm. like they did like some scientific tests, where it's just like a, a small beard, like what I got going on, can reduce damage by up to five percent. But like a good decent uh yeah. bushy uh, kind of beard can reduce uh jaw fractures lacerations and uh, yeah. stuff yeah. like that all the way up to like you gotta go for gandalf you <laughs> exactly. gotta go, go for a gandalf level yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the more hair and, the better obviously and honestly it, it makes sense that dwarves would have like the these thick beards like <laughs> dwarves need a bonus to like face ac like if something's going to hit them in the face I and mean, they're very mm. stocky by nature right so like you gotta get yourself a like belt of dwarven of strength or something ah yeah i, I know there is an idea that literally makes strength. your hair grow out I'm pretty yeah sure. yeah like, there's some I'm, magic where you can use your hair you know like like jiraiya type shit like ah that's i think that i think sick. you should honestly go for that try growing out a beard and staying mm. like bald just full bald <laughs> and full beard the pure yeah, economy like, all in on the beer just focus all the follicles and then the only thing that, that the only thing that gets left is to wear a wizard hat so you can yeah, you gotta wear a boot yeah. on your head yeah, and those costs be like vermin supreme <laughs> Or, yeah, or see, that, or that. yeah, you know, you know that, that's the vibe right there. Yeah, is Vermin yeah. Supreme even running this year? I, <laughs> I hope so. Idea. God, uh, I hope so. Uh, we need well, uh, Kataman, <laughs> you're you're from Brazil, so you you oh, probably yeah. don't By the know way, that. Uh, to anyone listening, I'm Kamen Z. <laughs> well, welcome back. I think I forgot to introduce myself. Uh, you know what? I got so carried away just because like uh, it. It's so natural having you on the show since Aww. last time. I appreciate so, that, honestly. Some of our uh, past listeners may remember you. Uh, yeah, well, to the new ones, you can go ahead and Deja vu. I've been in this place before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. So returning guest, Kahneman Z. Uh, as uh, some of uh, our American listeners uh, might know, uh, Berman hmm. Supreme is this uh, this uh, crazy guy <laughs> that just like he runs for president every time. He has what, the... what, wait, what is the name? What is the name? Berman Supreme, and he so, runs yeah. under that name. I... Yeah. So, so he's a guy who is very bold political. He's... We normally don't bold. talk about politics here on the show, <laughs> but the well, world has, he's so got cartoonish like, though. Everyone has got a good dose of politics in their feed for the last week. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Honestly, like Damn, dude, man. Uh, everyone else is like as soon as that whole uh assassination attempt happened, Damn. like uh, the entire Twitter feed is just like, oh, everyone, we gotta stop talking about D D now because we have to talk about this, and then you got yeah, people not like, just Twitter, hey, man. This, pretty this much terrible. every social media app crazy. But you know what? Oh, yeah. As always, with anything political that happens or just anything in general, I think at this point, the best part is always the same, the yeah. memes. <laughs> I just I have a few yeah, it's always the memes. here from the memes are incredible from Supreme himself that I think I love the memes you guys would love to hear. Oh, yeah. I might, I might want so, to. Uh, so gingivitis has been eroding the gum line of this great nation long enough. <laughs> Three ponies for all Americans. See, the more uh, ties you wear, the higher rank you are. Wow. <laughs> did he say that like what is this a tweet did he say no, that live? he said this like no yeah, no this, this is his platform his <laughs> this yeah, is what oh, he runs he, on that's like an official do. document type of stuff wow yeah it should be for ponies not for war i think you know i feel yeah, like, like it, this, this man truly has the ideals that like at least the dungeons and talk shows team in wow. <laughs> i mean to be honest <laughs> have you seen like has your, have you seen japanese elections I'm pretty sure no. I saw like a, around a month ago on Twitter someone posting pictures and explaining the situation that, like in the Tokyo election or something like that. There's a guy who a Japanese guy, mind you, who doesn't speak English, but that quite literally dressed as a Joker. Oh wow! You, you know what? I believe it because uh, <laughs> you know we love oh Japanese uh, characters. <laughs> Everyone knows Goku. I would imagine like the Joker <laughs> is the American equivalent of Man. worldwide renown. I, lo I love this Goku. phrase. I love this phrase that has become, funnily enough, so very relevant in this very moment, which is like. Be the American that the Japanese think you are. <laughs> I want to be that, you know, just a, a burger in hand, a machine oh gun in the goodness. other, you know, the 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 whole oh vibe. Meanwhile, oh like uh, 
I kind of end up playing up myself to be more of a, a ranger Robin Hood type because like oh, I, yeah. I just like having a bow. I mean, if mm. I was as an Orion, I have to know how to shoot a bow. Otherwise, mm. I'll get my <laughs> Orion license revoked. True. Naturally. You're, you're, the, you're the very rare ranger proponent for the end. <laughs> <laughs> the very rare ranger player <laughs> absolutely i think the first character that i ever uh, put together on my own that wasn't pre-made was oh, a ranger because really? like it's just such a fun aesthetic that's sick oh that's sick. cool and at the same time i'm sorry for your loss the 2024 <laughs> ranger still sucks <laughs> uh, well to, to be fair uh, i was making it for 3.5 so oh. it was a different time <laughs> No, no, good, good then. But like at the same time, like 2024 version update is is coming, it's getting closer, and apparently most, uh, let me say most, right? Mm. All the new classes are improvements from the from the old ones, and, and, yeah. then, there's, and then there's just Ranger. <laughs> Uh, Ranger has always been a victim of this kind of thing. Oh, uh, for those of Poor you Ranger. that don't know, uh, one of the biggest uh, changes they made is like. They're making Hunter's Mark a class feature, but mm -hmm. it still requires concentration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, you know what? As a DM, uh, I look at that. I'll like, I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to yeah. ignore the concentration yeah. bit. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think a lot of DMs are not going to fully transition. I'm pretty sure a lot of DMs are going to go like, okay, I like the new Monk. I'm going to use the new Monk. I don't like yeah. the new Warlock. I'm going to definitely keep the old Warlock, you know? Because right. they, what's it themselves said that like, oh, it's all compatible. You can use like a 2014 class and a 2024 class in the same party. Imagine like a 2014 monk and a 2024 <laughs> monk in the same party. Yeah. So you know, I, I bet people are going to do this, like run it as an experiment, kind of see oh, yeah, how things go. Well, it definitely will. And that's kind of what the public is like for, right? I, I just think it's not going to be like a full they're gonna transition. Make it, like, we're going to push yeah. it to its limits, I feel. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the books, though, I'll jump right into nerd news yeah, just for a little ahead. bit because uh, we did check out the book release schedule. Ooh. This oh, is Tiana bringing you nerd news <laughs> with your host Blank. <laughs> yes, take it away, Blank. Good, good point, Blank. Oh wow, I hadn't thought of that before. Uh, honestly, you know, it's raining, man. It's he always says the greatest day. things, man. Yeah, God, damn. Like, uh, I don't think he's ready. I don't think the internet's ready for you, bud. Nah, nah, he's he's so whole, completely right. I hadn't even thought of it on that angle. Yeah, he should be doing the speeches, man. Not Hulk Hogan. He should be plank up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't know how much I laughed when he took out the shirt and started fucking flexing. Like I, I felt like I was in a cartoon, man. It was crazy. I'm it just imagining crazy. Hulk Hogan uh, being replaced in that movie Three Ninjas that that he was in in the oh 90s. My, I don't, don't even Blank. know which movie that is. Oh my god! No, there, there's uh, in the 90s. There's this uh, movie series that's re real childish called Three Ninjas, where it's just wow. like a these three kids and they're all like, oh hey, we, we know ninja and karate shit, and then hmm. they then they fight some dudes and whatnot, and then like uh, the one with Hulk. Colgan, they're at like an amusement park and there's it it was just a, kind of a just a silly little movie but just but imagining there, like what he was the, the kid no 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 he like the, the kids meet hulk hogan oh okay okay, okay. <laughs> guy, i'm pretty sure he was already an adult back then so imagine the guy trying to play a kid hogan. <laughs> the most jacked jacked fucking guy in existence playing a kid like god damn. <laughs> he just wanted to <laughs> stranger things was bad god damn <laughs> you've never seen a kid like me brother <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> All right. Three ninjas high noon at Mega Fountain. What do you mean? I need, I need permission Mountain. to go to the bathroom? Let me tell you something, teacher. <laughs> <laughs> he plays a character named Dave Dragon. Uh, oh, Dave, Dave Dragon? Are you kidding me, bro? I mean, he's <laughs> already Mega Hulk up. Hogan. I mean, Dave Dragon's not too big of a far you step. You cannot make this up, I swear. I know. Oh. If you know about this movie, leave a comment. I mean, I know now for sure. <laughs> it is all my knowledge now. <laughs> it, it's something oh, else, I'll say. So for the this year, they're going to be releasing the Player's Handbook, the, the new oh, one, <laughs> before they... Uh, about two months before they released the Dungeon Master's Guide. 
and it's just like I- I- excuse me you're about to change yeah. all the rules that we know and love and you're going to get you're going to give all this stuff to the players first and then the dms are going to be like stuck holding the bag on how to f- figure out it is the a new little rules. ironic isn't it and that's not even mentioning that the monster man only comes out the next year <laughs> Yeah, the Monster Manual comes out in February. Guys, guys, let, let us take a moment to appreciate that the 2024 <laughs> Monster Manual comes out in 2025. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, like that you're going to so change funny. the entire system and oh, then spread it out goodness. so that, okay, in September, player's handbook. The players get their classes because it takes forever for players to yeah. figure out how to do any of that class stuff uh, on their own yeah. without the DM's help. So now yep. that gives the DM just enough time to wait till <laughs> November to figure out how to play this new version of the game. Oh, <laughs> I know that you mentioned it. I hadn't thought of it that way, but it, it does sense. make sense that the DM's guide should come first, right? right. Like, I, the I game doesn't so exist without the DM, bro. Honestly, like, you could get by with just, like, I don't know why they're not released together. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that would be yeah, ideal. I mean, baby delays. I, like, if I'm not mistaken, the current dates of release are already the delayed ones, right? It was supposed yeah. to be originally earlier. So we're, we're, we're saying that, oh, it's going to come out in 2024 and the Monster Mirror is going to come out in 2025. We are assuming yeah. that the current release dates are going to be kept. We are assuming that there's not <laughs> going to be any more delays. Uh. It, it was bold of us to assume. <laughs> How foolish. <laughs> the classic blunder. We are assuming that nothing else is going to happen. We, we don't know, you know. Yeah, I definitely sure. feel like the DMG should come out before anything else. That's yeah, really I, do, I do think so. Uh, I'm looking at some of the uh, little uh, details for the player's handbook. Okay, you got the, your standard classes, which I'm already kind of uh, like, excuse me, artificers <laughs> not going in here. Uh, yeah, you they're going to absolutely leave. So, like, what it. happens if you, you bring the new characters and stuff to your DM? He's like, I don't even have the books yet. <laughs> I don't even have the Dungeon Master's guy. I, I can't tell you how like, this new DD works. There's absolutely going to be like a transition period where everyone's still oh. getting the books either online or right. offline. But then oh, again, yeah. you got to remember that. If you go to D&D Beyond, I'm pretty sure the classes, like the the player's handbook classes, are free, right? Anyone can Oh, yeah, there's them. the Unearthed Arcana. And basically, they, you can get all this stuff from there. It says that they're going to be doing 48 subclasses to start, which yeah. is a bit more than we had uh, with... I think well, it goes four per class or something like that, right? Uh, something like that. I but... think it's exactly that, four per class, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. For yeah. a start, yeah, for a start. At, at, at first, but then you got to also factor in like wizards have like a shit ton yeah. of subclasses when they start oh, they're, out. They're well, absolutely gonna be like, bro. Did you see like the images okay. that they roll out of like this is the pre order edition, this is the special edition? This oh, is the yeah, edition. they're, they're treating it like access. a video game, they like, went yo, full that's... video game. So if they're, doing that now, like, if they're doing literally a battle pass, if they're doing that now, <laughs> In the battle you pass. can be absolutely <laughs> sure. And they're gonna keep going full throttle on this even more throughout the next year. So Yo, get ready for the DLC many, uh, packs, baby. <laughs> how, how many goblins do I have to kill to advance my battle pass? That's what oh, I got. They're know. already doing stuff like oh, dice yeah. skins, di- digital dice skins. I don't like, want the digital dice skins. Some frames for D and D, like the, the most random cosmetic shit. Like, bro, you already like, know they're gonna keep doing that even oh, more. It, it, that's just something there's gonna be a lot, uh, lot like of expansion the, packs yeah. even more than before yeah maybe uh, maybe I, you'll get an expansion pack of a new class or just more sub maybe. maybe maybe more spells man i hope... I, I like that the uh weapon mastery that they put in like i was using a type of weapon mastery homebrew before mm. all this so like nothing really changes for me there mm. yeah. but like what really gets me is like 144 character background options like for the for the new book Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's nice. nice. Yeah, that's no, that was a lot. That was good. A lot of options. They probably got like all the backgrounds that are that are already official. Yeah, from the last and just and they them. Yeah. them. Yeah, most likely yeah. to get up to that number. I mean, I honestly hope that with the especially with this new video game approach, that we mm. do get more classes because like yeah. throughout the ten years of 2014 to here from 5e. We only got Tasha's Artificer, and honestly speaking, it was the weakest design class of all of them. Yeah. Like, and come on, man. They did not do that. It's one of my favorites. Justice. And just like, 
It is one of my favorites as well, but not because it's well designed, it's because the concept is amazing. You know? Yeah, it's just fun. You know? Yeah, the technology and the flavor is fun, but like speaking of design, uh, and this is, I don't, I wouldn't say a consensus, but it's like, it's very like shared opinion on the community mm. online. The artificer is either, either really weak or r really don't get to do much a lot of the time. Yeah. You know? like That's why a lot of homebrew for artificer is like fixes or new classes, alternate classes, subclasses that boost the power budget, yeah. stuff mm. like that. And sometimes like people are like, uh, you look into it it's just like some of these fixes end up getting overpowered because like there's so much to compensate for at times yeah. and it's just like ooh, it can be a hard I, balance I to strike but it's um, really popular yeah. i would say Let's like see. artificer is about the same in, in terms of how much people try to fix it quote unquote as mm -hmm. the martial caster divide and funny yeah. enough you just mentioned the weapon masters like the most common thing in fixes quote unquote to marshals especially if you go like to the most popular ones, like Laser Llama's alternate classes. The yeah. most common thing is like, bro, look at the Battle Master. It's by far the best like mm -hmm. fighter subclass. Yeah. Why oh, is yeah. it by far the best one? Because it's the only one that makes the fighter feel like what it should be. True. Yeah, it you gotta be tricky. You gotta be have tactics, class. you know? You and should be- Everyone looked at that mm -hmm. and, and, and comes the realization. Wait a minute. What exactly causes the master, the, the martial caster divide in the first place? What causes it? It's simple. Spellcasters have spells. What are yeah. spells? There are a million different options that offer you automatically customization, versatility, mm -hmm. and dynamicity yeah. in Utility. combat and out of combat. Damage, Marshals damage. don't have anything, right? And yeah. I get the whole approach. That, Here's a guy with a weapon. I yeah, I get the whole approach that a lot of people have that is like, I, I prefer Marshals being like completely weaker, quote unquote, and simplify because it's the perfect type of class mm -hmm. to give to a new player because they literally only have to roll one dice every turn to attack and that's it. Yeah. So yeah. I get that approach, but I don't think that should be the norm. I think that should be an mm -hmm. option. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that because like one of the things that I look at when it comes to marshals is just like, if I'm going to play a marshal, I want to be cheeky. I want to be working with whatever I have available to make stuff happen. Okay, uh -huh. I got caltrips. I got ball bearings. Yeah. Let's yeah. get tricky up in yeah. here. Yeah. I want to be taking my yeah. weapon and like tripping them. Like hook swords would be road. amazing for something like that. See, like, like, you don't that's, even that's see my like that. Like if I'm going to be playing a martial character, it's because it's like there's a there's a role or like a niche I'm trying to like fulfill, mm. right? Mm. Yeah. So it's like outside of that you're not going to match up to a caster yeah no yeah, yeah. That, that, was, that was that was that's what i was getting yeah. into like what do you do to like why does why does the, the divide exist because okay yeah. spell casters have that but marshals don't they are missing a, a, a counterpart a martial counterpart mm -hmm. to spells and once the people lo looked at the battle master they realized mm -hmm. bro this is it like martial maneuvers. Every yeah. martial class should have their own exclusive martial Ooh. maneuvers that make sense. Exactly. And that's exactly what Laser Lama did. That's why his alternate classes are so popular yeah. because he took that and he did it. He did it for Rogue. He did it mm -hmm. for Barbarian. He did it for Martial. And throughout the process of developing yeah. that concept, what did he also, also achieve that yeah. uh, there is another flaw on what is designed for the Marshals. Bro, spellcasters, after a certain level, they are basically demigods. They yeah. are basically yeah. demigods. They can yeah. shape reality to their will, both figuratively and literally when you get to ninth level spells. Yeah. Marshals don't. Like, when you, yeah. when you think of fantasy, and not just necessarily medieval fantasy, but fantasy in general, martial characters, a lot of the times, will have some mm -hmm. of the coolest and craziest feats that you will see, especially if you look at enemy. You mm -hmm. look at One Piece, the oh, guy's for sure. a sword and cutting a mountain in half. Where is that kind exactly. of demigod fantasy for right. March? So he did that. For example, Barbarian. Oh, fifth level exploit, martial exploit, which is what Laser Lama calls it. Oh, if you jump from a dist from a, a height of 60 feet or more and land, you don't you take no fall damage and you do a shock wave. They're blown Yeah, that's, that, that's you know, it right you know, there. You, that's good you, stuff. Oh, that's the rule of cool incarnate, bro. Look, you mm. remember a while ago where I had that idea for a martial character that was like a dragoon and he was all about like mm, maneuvers? Yeah, 
Yeah, kind uh, of yeah. Final Fantasy. Fantasy. And he was like a, yeah. a yep. leaper and he had like aerial mm-hmm. maneuvers and precision yeah. attack. Yeah. And like, yeah, I feel yeah. like this is like exactly like what fighting I'm game characters, for. anime characters. Yeah, the I, mean, like, I was thinking like full insect blade from Monster Hunter. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Monster Hunter, exactly. The giant sword that you swing yeah. and you like yeah. bitch slap a dragon so in the face and mix it with it like, and you like yeah like, you oh that's like, missing oh, yeah. oh yeah. that is missing yeah. the marshals like, in fight we always felt basic and yeah. i i get honestly the whole, like i was going to call it basic i don't know but, but, yeah, but dude, i feel like is. monster hunter has like a an idea for weapons and like fighting in general such a good basis for martial yeah. characters especially like the, the reason why so weapons in the way that they no yeah them. it's a really good monster hunter is a great fucking example but like oh by the way uh, it's okay if i swear in here right? yeah you know, oh yeah just, yeah just making sure because sometimes it just out. <laughs> yeah but like monster hunter is a great example but another thing that like uh I myself understand that some people are pissed off with the whole, oh, stop calling fighters basic, stop calling marshals basic, mm-hmm. because they're not thinking of 5v on, uh, specifically. They're thinking of yeah. the yeah. martial concept and fantasy as a whole. And absolutely, right. they're not basic as a whole. I just mentioned yeah. crazy examples. But, and I, and I also did like a, a meme subclass, the mm-hmm. badass fighter, which actually got really <laughs> popular on North Arcana when I posted it. Yeah, like, and you've the been main posting D&D a lot of good stuff I made a lately. meme. Yeah, I made that meme like, specifically like because of the, I don't know if you guys saw the Elder Scrolls trailer, where, where there was a single knight fighting against three dudes, which happened to be a rogue, a barbarian, and a caster, and the knight just <laughs> solos ah. there, you know? Yeah, 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 you showed that like, to us a while. Yeah, back. I think I did, right? Like, yeah, yeah, you did. That was amazing I remember because it. that became a meme, and I made a subclass based on that meme, exactly mm-hmm. making fun of mm-hmm. the whole, ah, oh, oh, you think I'm basic? Well, here what I can do. I did that like, specifically right. making fun of that meme, but I can understand. I am self-aware enough to understand that that meme exists for a reason. People mm-hmm. say that for a reason. It's because mechanically speaking, 5e made them basic. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's why like people look for so much identity and like power through weapons, right? Like yeah. it's yeah. the whole idea of like a magic weapon, giving magic to characters. Yeah, items. Yeah. Marshals yeah. always need to get the most magic items to make yeah. up for yeah. the fact that they're not casters, huh? I did come up with some minor, uh, like little homebrew rules that kind of help with marshals. Like a, mm-hmm. one that we've been employing in our One Piece campaign mm-hmm. is that Ooh, instead of using a, yeah, instead of using the traditional a uh, jump rules, for example, just like mm. oh, because like traditional jump is like uh, what is it, eight plus like your strength modifier. Yeah, and it still like uses your movement for that turn anyway. Yeah, and then like uh, you, you kind of like. It, I'd have to look it up uh, again, oh, but yeah. uh, at any rate, basically the concept is like, it doesn't, it's based on your strength modifier and doesn't get you very far. Yeah. And how I've been ruling it is using either your acrobatics or your mm-hmm. athletics modifier instead, yeah. which Perfect. goes significantly higher. Not much better. Yeah. And then like if you, and obviously as far as I feel it's better to just simply rule that however high you can jump, you can no longer take fall damage mm. if you land on your feet from any height that you could physically jump. Mm. Which yeah, is like, okay. That's an interesting way to do it. Like only martial classes can do that. Like, like mm-hmm. something yeah. that they get that is exclusive to them. Because yeah. that's the thing. What happens is that casters can, oh, okay, they don't do it as well as marshals, but they can still do anything that marshals can. They can wield a weapon, they can get proficiency. Multi-class is a thing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like marshals don't really is- have that exclusive identity to them. Find, I mean, the only like, thing they do you know people people mm-hmm. find their biggest loves in the mixes between the marshal and the yeah nation. yeah like yeah it's fucking what is it like the hex knight and shit like that explain like, oh, which knight yeah, people love Allergen, it. yeah there's a reason why but there's mm-hmm. a reason why the half casters like paladin which ended yeah. up being yeah. half marshal half caster end up being so popular and so powerful mm-hmm. yeah because they i mean everyone loves the spell sword, get a bit of you know? both words yeah a little bit of both and like i've always been a fan of the spell sword archetype Hell and yeah, like a, back in 3.5 there was actually a the variant Vegas. class of sorcerer where like a, a sorcerer you yeah you you get in exchange for less spell slots and mm-hmm. whatnot you actually get a buff to your hit die oh. to make you beefier and Ooh. more more able to fight so it's like mm-hmm. kind of buffing up the uh, sorcerer to be on par with something like the cleric, which is able to be a little bit more front line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. See, so, I, was that the gauge like, that I hear about sometimes? 
uh, like there's just I, I guess because like there's just so many things and options within uh, three point five. Yeah, where it's just I imagine. There was just a million different things going yeah, on there. Yeah, has a lot of content. But I sorry, what what were you saying, Tanga? Oh, uh, as far as like marshals go, right? I feel like I've always really liked the way that monks do it, where they're kind yeah. of like their their magic is like their key, like their uh-huh, inner, yeah, conceptually. So like, if if a fighter could like mm. have something similar like that, yeah. You know, like the yeah, class resources, right? Spirit, you know. Yeah, but that's exactly it. Like Laser Lamas just happened to be the most popular because I think he yeah. did it the best. His yeah. execution is amazing, and everyone that play tests it says the same that it's incredible. In, inclu- uh, including, uh, you know, the guy D and D Shorts, the YouTuber mm-hmm. that did ah, the, yes, the, very the familiar with Guide, the Kickstarter. Yeah. He posted yeah. a video recently talking about the new 2024 monk changes, and he literally says in the video, "I still prefer Laser Llama's Aldrin Monk." Yeah, uh, yeah, Lama's I remember Lama's saying is still that. better. It's crazy. Right, yeah. <laughs> so full endorsement. So like, they're, they're, Laser Llama's ones are mo- the most popular because of that, but they're far from being the only ones, and they're far from being the only good ones too. There are so many fixes, yeah. not only among monk but in martials in general. And the one thing that is always common, if not completely present in every single one of them, you know what it is? The maneuvers. Yeah. So mm-hmm. when I saw Apple Master, I was literally like, "Yep, about what I expected." Honestly, they, that's one thing that, that uh, because it's the same idea that everyone's been doing the last five to six years. At the very and least. even before that, even before yeah. that, back in uh, fourth edition, because wow. like I, yeah, yeah, I played some fourth edition back in the day, back in high school. Uh, basically, like maneuvers and abilities, like when those were ported over in fifth edition's uh, mm. creation, that basically became the uh, the subclass that everyone prefers here for the mm. fighter, uh, the battle master. Where yeah. before it was just yeah. standard martial practice. Yeah, like there you go. Like I feel like in their attempt to, to streamline things, because mm. uh, you know credit where it's due. The, one of the big reasons why 5e was so successful and became a, more mainstream than the ever was before is because it was streamlined and simplified enough to be accessible to a wider audience and still is. Yeah. Right. So I get it. The streamlining was absolutely yeah. the right choice. Credit mm-hmm. where it's due. But I feel absolutely. like in their attempt to streamline it, they missed the mark on marshals. Like they, they neutralized the martial power and the fantasy so much that the divide was created. So that's how I think it happened, man. It's yeah. crazy. And one of the things that's funny is because uh, I had seen like Laser Llama's alternate rogue, and there mm-hmm. was one feature in it that was like cunning strike, you know, cunning action, cunning strike, which mm-hmm. is like, oh, you can, you, the sneak attack damage dice, the extra damage dice for sneak attack, you can forego one mm-hmm. or more of these dice to do a specific effect. By each dice yeah. that you that you that you mm-hmm. sacrifice, so like oh, for go one damage dice, you can try to make them prone. For go another damage dice, you can try to apply this. Dude, okay, oh, that so was I, yeah. really, I, I love feel that. like I feel like rogues with the cunning action always should have had that as an option. Right? Exactly, like, it's so like yeah. it's so intuitive. Like in pocket sand, try to blind them. Yeah, like, it's so it's intuitive. Like, it's it's so rogue thing, so, right? Like, so genius, yeah. so perfect, so fitting. So I was you like, that's amazing. And arrow. then I saw the sneaky type. Let him be the sneaky boy. You know what Except, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I didn't do what they're supposed to do. You yeah, know? Rogues fight bang. dirty. Like, let them fight dirty. <laughs> exactly. And when I saw the 2024 Rogue, I saw that they literally had Cunning Strike. The exact same feature. So mm-hmm. I'm like, wait, what the hell? Are they just straight up copying Lazy Llama? And then I was informed. Wait a minute. The reason yeah. why Lazy Llama put that shit in his alternate class is because it was in 4E. Mm-hmm. Just brought yep. back stuff from 4E. Yep. It, it's literally just it. bringing back the good shit. Because so like I, the moment I realized that, I was like, "What the hell, Watsy? Why did you take those away in the first place?" Well, the thing is, so with the uh, fourth edition, like it, it's famously said by many people, yeah. like uh, fourth edition was so balanced, you could throw that shit off a cliff and it, it bounced <laughs> right back up, <laughs> just the same as when you left it. Uh, like there's Thanos tons of abilities change. that were just like <laughs> reflavored for like from class to class. That'd be yeah. the basically cookie cutter, the same ability, mm-hmm. and you'd have yeah. abilities that are once per encounter, like. Once per day, maybe once it was per week. Point. Maybe he brought it back from three point five. He was one of those. Oh, but very possibly. Point, like yeah, three point five had he, tons he hadn't stuff. created that on his own mind. He mm-hmm. looked yeah. at the older editions and brought back the best stuff. 
And I feel like that's possibly even harder yeah. to do properly, you know? So he was, I was uh, even yeah. more impressed by his work, yeah. even more pissed off at Watson for even taking that away in the first place. Again, yeah, it's one. really one of those things where being able to balance things and be a good game developer oh. is one of the it's one of the key th things that make for just being good with D&D as a DM and a homebrew mm -hmm. creator. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons that you know, Wizards of the Coast, I mean, not Wizards of the Coast, uh, Blizzard, mm -hmm. like a, Blizzard is famous for like a mm -hmm. they kind of incentivizing their player, mm -hmm. their uh, their people and game developers throughout their studio be like, hey, you play D&D? Good. That's exactly what we want here. Because mm -hmm. yeah, didn't we have uh, news about them? We do. So More? jumping back into some oh, of our man. our D and D news, I'm always kind of I always scared about Blizzard news. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always well, a bit scared. <laughs> uh, you'll you'll find this a little interesting. Okay. So Watsi has appointed John Height, a former World of Warcraft executive, as mm -hmm. their new president <laughs> after nearly three months without one. Because as uh, some of you may already know, uh, Cynthia Williams had stepped down and th that oh. seat had been gone for a while. No Watsi president for like mm -hmm. all this time. And then he here they start, they're like, okay, we, we need to bring in someone who appreciates D&D &D and oh, yeah. someone who's got that game developer uh, know-how. So in comes John Height with all of his experience with games like Hearthstone and Diablo three. Yes. And so like he, he's got the tenure, he knows his shit. And with the appointment to Watsi, uh, he's going to be focusing on like digital initiatives, including like uh, their, their VTT that they're working on and all their digital ah, game stuff. I just realized the video game stuff. They got a Blizzard guy to help on the video game approach. Yeah, which is, uh, mix, I, huh? I got mixed feelings now because like, oh, because they, they, really? they want to turn D&D into a video game because yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the yeah. The indie game would kind of fuck. Like, <laughs> no, if they, if they, do what they, do, if they did it right. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, it's one of those things where I have mixed feelings because clearly this guy has a good track record. And, like, he, he's worked with some of the best stuff that Blizzard mm -hmm. has done. And Blizzard has done some amazing stuff. But, like, and they have a lot of, in, like, Blizzard's, like, little employee culture they have a lot of respect for D, &D mm -hmm. and i'm hoping that this guy has that for the actual product but the thing is ultimately what watsi wants is they want to turn D, &D into a video game yeah. that they can just market and not have to sell well, the yeah. physical stuff market and monetize and, yeah and regardless if it's like this is coming more from hasbro or not the fact of the matter is yeah it really is. And honestly, it, it's not, I get why they're doing it. I, I really do. I just don't like it because like, uh, take a back dirt. Let's say back to the early two thousands, uh, Sony selling PS twos and whatnot. Now yeah. the cool, the thing about, uh, when they were selling, uh, the PS two is that it was being sold at a loss. Like mm -hmm. Sony was actually losing money on every PS two unit sold. And they, it was all in hopes of making their money back on the mm -hmm. games sold, which they absolutely did, which yeah. led to the PS2 being one of the greatest consoles of all time in huh. that regard. So it's not so basically what we're seeing here is a similar mentality where it's just like if you lose money on like having to create hard, real stuff like books, mm -hmm. dice, minis. Not to mention like, the shipping. Uh, the shipping, like, a, yeah. The way, like, the future of, like, production is going, you know? Yeah. We're moving toward the less physical reality. Yeah, I mean, when they sell you a digital book, it's the same price as the book, it's the same price as the physical yeah. book, minus the production costs. Why so, the fuck are digital yeah. games the same price as marketing? No, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and, and another thing... That's that's the, the thing that a lot of people complain about is like as for as long as you're still producing physical books, if I buy yeah. a physical book, I absolutely need to gain a fucking code 
to get a digital version. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Been feeling that for years. That is just scummy as hell, man. Yeah, it's just like, dude, you. I buy me a physical book, and then if I want to do anything with any of the online services they offer, offer. Get fucked, Orion. You better start resorting to piracy for a something you already own, and you're an asshole if you pirate it. And it's just like, I love, I love that phrase that also gets thrown around a little bit. Is that, yeah, if if buying's not owning, then pirating is <laughs> stealing, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I love that little flip that people are doing there. Uh, yeah, I mean that meme tickles the the, the One Piece lover in me, you know. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Yo, I, G, sadly, like want. me being a Hearthstone player, I'm sadly not not really optimistic with this new guy, because mm. man, Hearthstone is it, like it, the game is year up, year after year is getting lower budget, more power creep, mm. terrible balancing, just non-existent balancing mm. at this point. The power creep is unreal. And yeah, more and more and more microtransactions, and the players can get less and less way to accumulate gold, in including like, not even three months ago, not even two months ago, there was a big mm. controversy from the Hearthstone community, which was like, they tried pushing an update, which I shit you not, tripled the amount of work and time that they had to spend to do the, the, the daily quests, the daily and weekly quests. So really? Like, oh, uh, the, the typical daily quest, play five games, right? Mm. They yeah, the yeah, they classic. The same, uh, and you gain less experience for it too. Mm -hmm. It was insane. It was so much controversy. So many Dude. people leaving the game for the seventeenth time. I, I used they, to play Hearthstone. And then they back That's insane. But, they, oh, but look what they did. They backtracked to only a little increase instead of but only a little bit. bit. It's all. This is a tactic. This is a tactic that companies ought to do. They yeah, it's called the big do ass. Like a, a change that is purposely draconian. You know, in the yeah, world, yeah. Point, so Something that people horribly back, bad. Back, and they backed it, back it up a little, and people are like, okay, at the very least they listen, right? Oh, they listen, but not really. Oh, yeah. The end result, the, it was still worse than there was before. You know, it's it's a tactic. They they know that now. Yeah. They just do that all the time. It sucks. Dude, I wish I was scummy enough to pull shit like that. I'd be so much further in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how can you that's the way that it has to be. You know, you have to. How much happier, dude. I could yeah. not do that in good conscience. Like, yeah. it, man, how much just, happier would no. I be if I was a sociopath? <laughs> you just work honestly. I feel bad. Like, did I'm you like play Hearthstone world. before, Tonga? I did, yeah. Ah. Yeah, so, same here. I used to be really into Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. Like, a, honestly, my heyday in Hearthstone was about like nine ten years ago Whoa, back when they released man. mechs and i was like the only guy around uh yeah. running a warlock mech deck like, <laughs> nobody else would run it and it like it worked so well like <laughs> there's a very like niche niche even today imagine 10 years ago wow warlock yeah. mech. that's crazy these days i play i do still play a lot of like those kind of Oh, you play Legend of Runeterra? Yeah, Digimon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Digimon card game. Yeah. I played a little bit of the uh, of Runeterra. Couldn't couldn't fully get into it because it was still starting out. So mm -hmm. yeah, it wasn't exactly completely like you know perfect and functional. And I was still I was still playing Hearthstone. They, anyway. they like, their... I can only dedicate myself to one digital card game. It's impossible to do more. Yeah, honestly, like ha juggling multiple, it's like, dude, there's only so much bathroom time in the day. Yeah. Uh, you mean the yeah. Rune Terror, right? Yeah, yeah. There's there's one thing that I think they always got right from the beginning, but it's just, it's sad because it's not as popular as they needed it to be. You know, I feel like it's yeah. too poor because of that. In card games, especially, there needs to be like a PVE. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I get that. Any digital card games, especially, like needs that. Oh, for sure. And it's just like, you got to be able to work with the free to play players and not kind of drive them away yeah. with the power creep. Like right. that's something that the Pokemon card game online does exceptionally well. They oh, have yeah? the best uh, battle pass system that I've seen because oh, like, you don't have to go all in on it. 
but you're easily able to you're able to earn the stuff if you play a season regularly yeah. to be able to get the premium pass if you budget yeah. your stuff out just right yeah like it's, what what Blizzard does is it's terrible. Like they they push mm. out grind and grind and grind, and they go like, no no, no hold up, mm-hmm. we are not uh we are not hostile to free to play players. We want to convert them to paid players. Yeah. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna say uh, they uh, can play the game free to play, but it's gonna suck, right? The, the typical approach is gonna suck. Right? It's even worse than that, actually. Yeah. It's hostile towards casual players. Oh yeah, absolutely. Even paid players who play casually, they get screwed over by that shit. A yeah, lot of just, games just kind of like left the over the pro players. Oh, they shouldn't do that. They pro players are always an absolute minority. Esports these days, Ugh. they just they only care about that. No, I, yeah, it's it's ironic because Hearthstone's fucking esports scene was just killed, was just assassinated by yeah. by Blizzard themselves. Yeah, <laughs> Honestly, like Blizzard, like they had a good run. But then they yeah. just start running their own shit into the ground. Yeah. The Hearthstone and Overwatch being the chief examples. Like, I used to love Overwatch. I really did. Man, but then Overwatch 2 came out. It's like, oh, race. wow. But it's thanks, the same thanks, fucking guys. game. That was a <laughs> fault from It's race, the same game. Bro. They made it free to play. They took yeah. away content that I paid for. My yeah, God. that pissed me off. Like, you, you don't and, have to keep your skins. Like, and, oh, yeah, and then, yeah. like, on top of that, like, a... Jesus. Sam, our mutual communist friend, uh, telling me that I'm acting entitled because I paid for a game and now I have less features in it. Our mutual yeah. communist friend. It's like, get fucked, dude. <laughs> I paid for this. And we're not even touching on the, not even elephant, the hippopotamus in the room, which was the PvE. Honestly. Oh we're not even touching upon that. Imagine. Jesus. Yeah. They, they gutted that game. It was Dude, Overwatch. I miss one old school kind of magic. Ant, <laughs> and then Overwatch Two was like, "Hey, you know what you did like about Overwatch One? We uh, took all of that, put it in this box, <laughs> yeah, a few times, and then gave it back." Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, By the way, there's like, less things like, in the box than when you started. It's yeah, like yeah. Patrick going, "What if we take the good things and put them <laughs> The things that were Honestly. in the box cannibalized each other. <laughs> Man, yeah. it's sad. Y'all see these uh, fucking D and D stamps that they're pushing now? Do the stamps go okay? Stamps. <laughs> My girlfriend is a big like she sends letters and shit all the time. She was in the post oh. office and she sent us pictures of the D and D stamps. I'm gonna pull those up actually. Wait, there, there we go. Like I'm pulling them up on the stream here. Stamps like for for mailing and stuff. Oh, mail stem. I didn't know there were D and D mail stem. I wasn't aware of. Yeah, that. we got like an owl bear, wait, wait, dragon, wait, 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 exactly going, gelatinous this cube. Uh, let's see. You said you were pulling up on the stream. stream. Where exactly? Where exactly? Uh, I posted the stream to the general chat. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, wait, general or D and D general? Uh, just general. Okay. Oh, YouTube Live. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. I see. I hadn't, I hadn't seen that before. Yeah, like uh, I saw some oh, of them because, like, if... oh, the mimic one is awesome. What the fuck? I, I like the mimic one. Like the displacer bees kind of looks anorexic, but also, you know whatever. Is it just me? Is it just me, or does this artwork remind me of the Pathfinder artwork? Uh you know what? I, I could see that. That gelatinous cube, I like particularly but if, if i scroll like up here like uh, you see this whole uh this whole little portrait thing and then like sections of it are individual stamps so you got oh, like look a, at that. got a gith fight yeah we got a gith fighter we got like no, i think they got a good selection here of iconic creatures yeah if not like, the most iconic creatures from dnd yeah yeah it, it's really cool it's for the 50th anniversary oh like, they're doing a lot of things for that that's cool huh man yeah it's interesting Ooh. There's all kinds of stuff up in here. What? Really? Honestly, what, uh, WotC should have really doubled. If they were going to double down on anything when it comes to D&D and Magic, it should have it been, been physical been, merch. Yeah. Right? And, yeah, like that and the and the crossover between D&D and Magic. Yeah. It's just like, yeah. that was one of my favorite sets. Yeah. And doubling like, down on that, it's like, okay, th- you could just be like, hey, we got cool play mats. We got 
more cool dice got more cool tokens yeah, oh man. and then all of a sudden stuff that you got from your uh, your your magic uh, stuff you can start using that for your D&D. Like, I think oh, it's okay, such a missed cool. opportunity because, like, you got to realize that when it comes to, like, D&D, we play it digitally and we yeah. kind of were forced to stop playing it digitally more and make digital options better and more mm-hmm. accessible because of the pandemic. So I get it. But yeah. at the same time, D&D is still a tabletop RPG, mm-hmm. right? Table yeah, means be, yeah. physical. That's, like, that's it's like roots. D and D merch is physical merch. Dice are physical things. We make digital yeah. versions of the physical, but the digital, came, the, sorry, the physical came first. Yeah, like D and D merch is like dice, like custom dice, custom dice, yeah, games, yeah. custom dice towers. Those yeah. things make a lot of money. There's a whole market of D and D merch and tabletop merch. Yeah, like, like, t- like tons of people are in that market. Why not capitalize on that on, or instead of making digital stuff that is only mm-hmm. going to be usable in your own platform? You're going to try to monopolize digital platforms for tabletop? It's insane. Yeah, I mean, like digital stuff you're never going to really own because yeah. they can just like – Of course, they a server gets emp Oh, well. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's literally the TFT argument all over, all over again. <laughs> you, you'll never own anything that way. And it's just like, oh, I don't – I'm never happy about that. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, I, like I do imagine a, there was one thing. Owning things? How dare you? <laughs> Ownership is not something we believe in. It's not <laughs> we don't it. tolerate <laughs> this here. Yeah, damn. We don't do that here. <laughs> I mean, but like, the, the whole industry is kind of like a uh, falling apart here and there. I mean, uh, the last piece of a. Uh, uh, nerd news i got here is oh, okay actually about a nerd news outlet shutting <laughs> uh shutting down oh. a dice breaker oh, wait wait oh. i know that what the fuck yeah dice breaker i used to get a lot of our articles from dice breaker I, and uh, what? dice yeah. breaker shutting down it it was acquired by ign in may and oh. ended up uh, shutting down in june of course and um, they're all like, oh, they for literally just circumstances. Bro, did IGN just literally buy it to kill it so they can remove competition? Is that what happened? That's a that's a strategy. It wow. is. So uh, I wow. I believe it. If you oh told me that's God. exactly what they did, I'd be like, yep, yep, I, I see it. Oh, that that that's awful. <laughs> I do not like that whatsoever. What? Oh, fucking IGN is crazy. Uh, Sam. Before we get uh, too Ooh. far off, but you got us uh, some monster for this week. Ooh, kind of. I have a monster topic, I guess. Ooh. Okay. Well, I, I got I got the stinger. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Sam's monster. Wait a, Wait a minute! Did someone actually sing that? <laughs> Did someone actually uh, sing that? What? I believe you used the. I, a, uh, I used AI to make uh, that, and like uh, I, I know it's a controversial thing, yeah, but yeah, like yeah. it just came out so nice. No, I don't mind it whatsoever. That was really funny. I was like, oh yeah, they found the music which has someone <laughs> mentioning like a creature of the week. That's so perfect. Sam, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to stop it early just because like the that solo, solo goes on solo. for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I kind of wanted to. Um, I feel like lately in the news, like cryptids have been like a big like. Uh, uh, there has been a coming, resurgence. They're coming back, you know. They're very popular in like the physical you know merch and shit like that and everything i was in cryptids you know so i've been thinking you know a dragon is a tale told for as long as humans and elves yeah what about the more unusual shit right the more mundane creatures maybe a little harder Mm -hmm. to believe for the unusual for the for the usual npc or farmer you know in their sheltered lives for what may or may not truly exist you know they they've heard the tavern stories of a you know, adventurer mm-hmm. felling a dragon, right? But what about the the weird creatures that stalk their farms, right? Mm-hmm. You know, shit like that. Like the chupacabra? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah, like the ch- el chupacabra. Hell yeah. You know, so <laughs> first, what is a cryptid, right? So a cryptid is a creature 
that is not known to science or a general mass of people, therefore is classified as a myth or folk tale surrounding whether or not it truly exists, usually based on or surrounded by particular cultures or belief systems. Mm. Right, so you have like the Native Americans, we know they have like their Thunderbird. They're very yeah. like religious in their belief of nature spirits, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So I do kind of have a few that I want to talk about to kind of come from different cultures and places around the world. Right. So I do have the Thunderbird as my first one. Oh, that does sound cool. Cause like, like uh, growing up, I was very involved with uh, some of the tribal stuff because like mm. I have a lot of Native American heritage. Mm -hmm. And like, uh, mm -hmm. it was always cool when uh, I'd hear some like uh, the elders around uh, talk about uh, some stuff like the Thunderbird. Like, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And they, yep. they have tons of creatures and spirits and stuff like this. Uh -huh. So a cryptid of indigenous North American legend, the Thunderbird is usually depicted as an incredibly large hawk or eagle shaped bird with the ability to create thunder with each beat of its wings. Mm. So imagine like your party could meet it while in the wide open plains on an airship headed for a different land or maybe even in the mountains aligned with some local storm giant. Whether a boss or a friendly druidic companion, the Thunderbird would make a quite an addition to nearly any adventure, and any you know lore, just like in your adventure too. I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, uh, it, it's wild to think of like a, you got a world full of all these crazy things, yeah. and then like somewhere in there, there's a there's a line between. Uh, what is known like everybody knows that dragons exist right. oh, dumb yeah. and then mean like it's like okay well this monster on the other hand like crazy uh, that that's not real speaking yeah. of like this thunderbirds check out what i posted in general it mm -hmm. just reminded me of this <laughs> i gotta pull up my thing oh the lightning phoenix it really reminded me of this card nice Ooh. that was really cool Came straight on my mind when you mentioned it. Really cool. Oh, that is pretty cool. What was that other one that I was talking about? That bird? Yeah, about encryptids? Yeah, there was, there was another one I want to talk about. The, it was called the... One second. Mm. Oh, yeah, cryptids are awesome. They absolutely belong on D&D for sure. Yeah. Oh, man, I think it's so cool. It's something I've been... Just... Honestly, like seeing more and more over the years, I have, like, since I yeah. started like doing homebrew, a lot like specific yeah. like races and boss encounters. Like I've seen a lot of Mothman. Like I've oh, seen a lot of Mothman is the best man. I love, I love a good Mothman. He's my favorite. <laughs> I've seen a lot of those. Mothman is my favorite. So, fun enough, I, I I think I've seen some South American cryptids as well. Sometimes. Yeah, they like a, yeah, I did. I, did I was going to ask about that because like Plank here wants to know about some uh, Brazilian uh, cryptids. Mm. Oh, he had mentioned that before. I, I guess there I is one that I picked. You know, oh. called the now. Forgive me if I say this wrong. Oh, you mean Brazilian Nahil, cryptid? Nahilito from Argentina. Oh, Nahil. An, an can, can you spell that? Uh, N A H U E L I T O. Oh, yeah, that's exactly as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> oh, there's that U. Okay. Nahilito. Yes. Yes. Uh, so it's a, it's a lake monster, kind of yeah. like resembling the Loch Ness yeah. monster. Very so, similar, actually, yeah. Nahuito lives in Nahul Huapti Lake in the Patagonia region of Argentina. It has been described as a giant serpent or as, you know, such like plesiosaur. Mm. There have been reports of the creature going back to the late 1800s. The press coverage didn't really begin until 1922. The Buenos Aires Zoo has been trying to find evidence of a plesiosaur ever since. I can't uh, blame them. That'd be quite the attraction. Yeah. Zoologist Clemente O'Nelli has contributed funds for an attempt to find evidence, but to date there is still no proof. Today, the small lake is called Laguan del Plesiosaurio, or Plesiosaurio. <laughs> the last reported sighting was April 2006 by an anonymous Ooh. photographer who oh. dropped off two photos at a local newspaper. 
<laughs> he must have been chased by the FBI or some shit. It's like, yeah. I gotta, go. Away. Like, I gotta that, go. Yeah, that one. I, I got an anonymous really tip. Let me just slide these across the table. <laughs> I didn't know about this one because it's definitely a, a very local one, right? Yeah. I don't yeah. think it's that popular on the whole of South America. Oh, yeah. There's another but one. There's awesome. one that from hmm. my country, which is like oh, yeah, definitely yeah. more popular f- in the whole country itself. Can't, can't hmm. say for outside hmm. of Brazil, but it's definitely like a Brazilian in general cryptid. Hmm. Yeah. And I, I my, personally, I think it's the coolest one, which is the Boitata. The, the Boitata. Basically, a flaming demon Ooh, giant. Thing. Oh my god, that's cool! Ooh, I've got yeah, I'm gonna ask that if there was any that like you'd heard of. Yeah, I, I'm gonna show that to her, some of the viewers that's here. Cool was, as hell. Yeah, that, <laughs> I like that. Holy shit! Crazy. Oh yeah, there's also like the headless mule, which is basically the headless like a mule. mule. Yeah, headless mule, but instead of being just fully headless, it's like it has a giant flame instead of its head like, dude like a, that's very like simple, a, but, very simple but yeah also that, that's like a trip. if an if free merged with a doulahan that's so cool yeah that's cool. Like, like it was a horse it. see this it's is exactly what i'm talking about right like <laughs> these kind of things would be crazy like there's this other one i saw from uh from <laughs> chile and it's called the alicanto it's a oh, that, luminescent that cool. bird that's found in mines and caves they says uh, their feathers are metallic colors and shine in the darkness. Ooh, and that okay. there were apparently awesome. two kinds. One of them feeding on silver and the other on gold. Uh, so they just they eat would, valuable, precious yeah, metals. Sometimes they, they would eat so much that they would get too heavy to fly. And whichever they ingested would dictate what color they were. Oh, interesting. And so if you see a silver one, you already know he ate silver. Yeah, right. Yeah. And or it would stars. kind of indicate to the miners and such nearby that there were silver deposits yeah. nearby. Okay, so so one of these birds is useful for fighting uh, werewolves, and the other <laughs> <Yeah>. is good <laughs> yeah, for speaking like. Of, speaking of werewolves, you know the funniest thing: another like folk tale, specifically yeah. Brazilian folk tale. It's literally just the werewolf. Really, like, it's mm-hmm. funny because we learn about that in school since we were very little. We are already familiar with the concept of werewolves. From a very young age, because it was part of her folk tales, and then I and then That's eventually awesome. I just realized, wait, it's not a Brazilian thing; it's just a general fantasy thing. Really, but just but it also just happens to be a specifically Brazilian folk tale for some reason. And there's no difference; it's literally just you know full moon, same thing, beat for yeah, beat. It's so funny how yeah, that works. It's crazy where you can find stuff like that. Like uh, there's actually like uh, some local reports from like 15 years ago Damn. in my area, yeah. like uh, in a town that I used to live in. That, uh, yeah, like something about uh, some werewolf uh, type activity. Uh, it was never confirmed because, uh, like, of course, of course, know, it's, of course it's interesting not. how different countries like that always have like similar, you know, like cryptids. Or, like, I cryptids. mean, to be fair, if you think about it, like, if it had been confirmed, quote unquote, then it wouldn't really be an urban legend, now, would it? Yeah, mm. true. I yeah. guess. I mean, that's kind that of what really makes them fun, you know? Like, yeah, in a way, yeah. Oh man, you want to? I always, I always love this this topic of like different countries and like they're crazy, uh-huh. like fucking. Because like I was looking at other ones and there's like African or like Kenyan. Oh, uh, that got Christian. some crazy stuff for sure. <laughs> yeah, man, I saw this one nice. it's called the Donganek. Uh, it was uh, apparently a fourteen oh. foot long, the head Damn. marked and shaped like a leopard. But Whoa. as big as a lion, as the creature had two long tusks coming down from its upper jaw like a walrus, and had scales like an armadillo. Wow, oh, dude, <laughs> that kind of sounds like a boosted saber tooth. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's as if they needed any like extra. Like <laughs> dude, I don't even know how saber-tooth. I would stat one of those out. I'd probably just throw it in the chat. Saber tooth. It was, it was called the saber tooth. Sounds crazy for a stat block. Not gonna lie. God damn. Yeah. It was known as the jungle walrus. <laughs> wow. The jungle walrus. God, okay, okay. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I'm, I'm gonna make a stat block for that right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm brewing that right now. <laughs> oh um, yeah, there's an illustration for it. it. Does look like a giant snake in this picture? 
Okay, let's see. It would be size class huge. <laughs> Jungle wars. <laughs> Jungle armor plates like an armadillo. Damn, bro. Walrus. No, no, for yeah. real, like armored armor boosted plate? saber tooth from steroids, bro. Yeah, um, there's, there's all steroids. kinds of things. I just think it's such a cool topic Damn. that could be, you know. Be utilized. You could just get really creative and be like, I thought it was really freaky oh, creatures. Folklore is like an <laughs> endless font of inspiration yeah, for yeah, often, bro. Yeah. And fantasy content in general. It's, it's, it's like a treasure trove if you're willing, right, to dive deep, yeah. I guess. Willing to dive okay. deep and have the interest to back it up. See, uh, this is one of the like a lot of people uh, shit on chat GPT, but its ability <laughs> to take a, a description of a cryptid and pump out an entire stat block in a matter of seconds. What? What did it come You're up probably with? gonna have to balance that stat block still, but damn. Oh, that probably. Is it's a CR8 from the looks of it. But it's let me just, uh, I'm gonna put it up on stream right here. Yeah. Let's see. So we got an AC 16, like a. Oh, over 168 hit points. Okay. Got a, Damn. We got a swim speed and a land oh. speed. Yeah, that makes sense. Huh. Okay, so 40 foot speed. That's pretty fast. You said it was on the stream? Yep, I, I just put it up on there. Like a, the stream oh, might be see, a little deadly. Yeah, dark <laughs> vision, <laughs> damage resistance to piercing. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. A wow. keen smell. The jungle walrus has advantage on perception checks. It's amphibious. How? how wait, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little curious. Ha, have you done this before, ChatGPT? Is it already used to these kinds of requests? That's why it was so. Uh, like well, actually, yeah. ChatGPT is very, very intimately familiar with D and D, so it's very easy to get stat blocks out of it. Oh wait, wait, wait a second. Let me understand. Is ChatGPT like? constantly updating itself with every single request that everyone in the world that uses it gives it it's like a shared like database so it's I'm not constantly entirely moving. certain but probably because that one that would explain it oh so many people have already show, like made it do dnd things and whenever you go and ask a dnd thing it's already used to it so few seconds yeah. that would make sense to me and like obviously like it would have lots of information on like uh like kind of common knowledge stuff and like I don't know just so like uh, it's just the internet I guess yeah like it, it would have tons of like uh, <laughs> internet to stuff for D D to kind of vibe off of them. <laughs> I I, ju I just can't help but look at ChatGPT and have this feeling in that not this feeling this specific yeah. sentence come in my head every single time and the sentence is I can't believe my little Skynet is this cute. <laughs> <laughs> my little oh, Skynet. didn't even give us a description. He just wants to learn stuff, man. It, every <laughs> single time I hear someone mention ChatGPT, anyway, this it gave us flavor text. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do, do you guys huge, like. Have you ever heard of like. Uh, beast have you ever heard of the. <laughs> oh, my God. Have you ever heard of the uh, AI VTuber, Neuro Summer? I, I, I have. Know. Yeah. It's so fucking funny because at this point, she just became to me the face of Skynet, the face of ChatGPT, the face of AI in general. <laughs> Every time I hear something AI, it's not Cortana that comes into my mind. You know, it's not Clippy. It, it's Neuro. It's that anime girl. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's impossible to stop it. It's just getting... Like Ooh, anime yeah. taking over AI, is taking over on anime AI. You're done, bro. We're yeah. fine. Uh, dude, back it up. The, the moment they made it adorable, we were cooked. That, oh you know. my god, <laughs> my little Skynet can't be this cute. It's over. It's so <laughs> over. Oh man, I found the uh, the myth and folklore wiki page for the boy Tata. <laughs> That's so cool. Dude, you could just straight copy paste descriptions of things and be like, "Yo, give me a stat block, Chat GPT," and then you could just like, "Okay, you have a Wait, you full know, robust I, I, outline." I'm curious. I'm curious. I want you to try try doing something for me if you're willing. Put a description right, right. of yourself. What is the Ooh. what is your stat block? What is the Orion stat? Block? Ooh. <laughs> okay, give me a stat block. Like, describe yourself in a phrase, and let's see what happens with the Orion stat block. I'm very curious. Okay, you have to mention that you're bald. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> for the balding oh, pop. Imagine trade. if you get a trade for it. It gives you plus one AC. <laughs> oh, even better. If someone, like, every time someone attacks you, they have to make a saving throw to avoid getting blinded <laughs> by the light of your ball. It's like the Dragon Ball, you know, Krillin with no, the, no, no. the shining forehead movement. Attack something. I'm pretty sure there's a dra- that be DBZ attack that he just puts his hands on his head and like his bald forehead just shines and blinds people. I'm pretty sure that's a thing. Imagine if you get an action like that for your stat block. Or even better, imagine if he just gives you the Gandalf beer and you get a plus one to AC because of it. Okay, here we go. Oh my goodness. Okay, is it on? Is it on the stream? Uh, I'm I'm gonna pull it up in just a moment because it's still processing. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, it, it looks chaotic. Good. It's off. To, it 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 gets me. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> okay. Good start. Good start. <laughs> Orion the Artificer Bard. Ooh. Ooh, I can see it. Wow. I've been. I've been told uh, by people in the past that I'm like an artificer bard, so definitely. It would be your preferred multi-class to represent yourself, not a character, but yourself, right? Mm. Yeah, because like I-, I like to tinker around with the uh, stuff, so I-, I feel that. Yeah, I think you're very yeah. handsy, you know, you're very <laughs> outgoing personality wise. A little Ooh. handsy, huh? <laughs> I think CR five is rather generous, but I'll take it. You like to get your hands on? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Magical tinkering, infused items, spell casting. Okay, it literally is Artificer Bar. Okay. Yeah. Bro, I could, okay, so in the D&D setting, if you were to exist as you are, I feel like mm-hmm. this would be... <laughs> it has, a, it has flavor are. text. Oh, okay. Oh. Orion is a charismatic and intelligent artificer bard, known for his quick wit, technical expertise, and captivating voice. His balding oh. head and well-groomed beard <laughs> give him a distinctive look that complements his role as a podcast host. Orion is always tinkering Perfect. with gadgets or composing new tunes, seamlessly blending his love for artifice and music. Whether crafting magical items or performing inspirational melodies, Orion is a valuable ally and a formidable foe. Dude, I can literally see your weapon is like a staff okay. with a microphone on it. Okay. <laughs> no, like that one did you want? Such a good concept. It's such a oh good concept. Oh my god. You have a bunch of like sound microphone based staff attacks. is crazy. Oh man, I can see it. Dude, I'll straight have you guys fight Orion and it's gonna be like, <laughs> like it's perfect because for 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 spellcasters, like <laughs> staffs are a spellcasting focus, are arcane yeah, focus, yeah, yeah, right. For bards, musical instruments are their focus. Yeah, this is hey, both. That, that works. This is a it, double it does. focus, bro. You know what's <laughs> funny about that? I'm actually really good with a uh, with a bow staff because I did a lot of uh, martial arts training when I was in high school. Donatello, Coden. <laughs> Donatello. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, Donatello is like my favorite Ninja Turtle. I can see Hell that. yeah. I really you like Raphael. Ask your, like your inspirations and shit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Raphael. I love it. Mm. Yeah, have you guys ever seen like the, it's an old one, like an old CG movie of the Ninja Turtles Maybe. where Raphael becomes a vigilante and he has this uh, yes, armor. Uh, yes. I believe that's the 2007 um, TMNT, right? Yep, yep, I, I know. Think that was the best one by far of all the Turtles movies. It was so good. And I remember that it was hilarious never... that it was hilarious that Leonardo goes away to South America to train <laughs> and get better. It comes back and then gets clapped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like and the, the the cool thing about it is that it had a game, right? And I yeah, loved I, I playing that it. video game when I was little, man. I loved playing as Raphael. He he lit I shit you not. He literally had a mechanic where he could accumulate rage. He had a rage yeah. bar. <laughs> so you He's kept, a barbarian. You kept, like you kept getting hits or on you, like taking damage or killing mm-hmm. enemies, and the bar kept going up. When he reached the the top, you unlocked the special move or literally just go and then the screen gets <laughs> red and everything dies. It was like that's a, fantastic. 
It was like literally <laughs> Chaos Blast from Shadow the Hedgehog or something. It was this yeah, like, I, I can see Shadow that. The that, that. That's fantastic. I love Raphael. I love it. Dude, Ninja Turtles uh, goes hard in, on so many things. You know that the 2014 Ninja Turtles had a obligatory D&D episode. What? They always have one. What? Every, every, Wait, everything yeah. Ninja has like a... Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. like they had it. But honestly, oh. the D&D episode oh. where they are, end up uh, playing with like this... Uh, like someone throws away a starter set for D&D and they're like, guys, let's play this. And they're like, okay, yeah, we're going to do this. And then they meet this uh, mutant that does like this mind control <laughs> thing and then like uh, brings them into a whole fantasy I, I, setting. Oh, Wait, but thinking about the four of them in like Shre- not Shre- uh, Splinter sitting down at the table and like reading off their characters. <laughs> That's sheet. amazing. That so yeah. Honestly. You, you said it was a 2014 like, series? The, 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 the D&D episode? Yeah, the, the, yeah the, a lot of people really shit on that series, but it had some real gems. It was pretty well done in certain regards. Uh, like, it it's, not the, the it's not the best. One. Yeah, yeah, that was the Nickelodeon one. I see. And one of the things that they did really well one episode that really stands out in my mind was the episode where Michelangelo uh, meets Napoleon Bonafrog, yes. which is, which is a hundred percent based on Napoleon Bonus Dynamite. Frog? What? Yeah, he's a mutant frog. That's hell? just it's just frog Napoleon Dynamite. Oh my god! Wait, I had, I have to <laughs> see this. What is this? Hold on. <laughs> I had it, to. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's oh, it really. Is. Napoleon Bonafrog. Wow. <laughs> Napoleon Bonafrog, bro. What? Is that not the best name? That's amazing. Like, I, I gotta play a grung now. That's Napoleon Bonafrog. Oh, what? There, there are various designs of him, too. And somehow <laughs> each one is uglier than the other. <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. Bro, that's crazy. I, I can't even tell which one of these is the 2014 one. Uh, but they're I'll all to... fucking ugly. Okay. I'll okay, to... I found the 2014 one. That it looks hideous. <laughs> A lot hideous. of people really didn't care for the uh, the animation style. Yeah. But like, uh, overall, I think the series did pretty well. Like, it had I some funny stuff. It. The, the, the Donatello this. being in love with April subplot was a little weird. It's like, oh. dude, just drop this. But like, the, the whole thing, I, know about I liked that. it. But look at this. Look at look at this hideous thing. Look at this <laughs> living cryptid right here. <laughs> no, Honestly, me. Napoleon yeah, Bonaparte, that's, the cryptid. That's, the cryptid. That, that's it, right? That's the cryptid. <laughs> I'm all in. Oh, God, my God. Damn. This thing's going to haunt my nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's really what you would tell your kids to, you know, <laughs> keep them inside at night. <laughs> He's got a fanny pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really puts the, it, 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 like the whole episode. He straight talks like the Napoleon dynamite, this, the, everything. He's like, yeah, oh, my whole tribe's just a bunch of idiots. <laughs> Okay, yeah, God, it, it was absolutely they don't intentional, appreciate right? me. Absolutely <laughs> unintentional, right? <laughs> a walking <laughs> reference of a character. You know what? That's fun. I, I, I can I can fuck with that. <laughs> like that's how honestly I gotta throw Napoleon Dynamite in, in my next campaign. <laughs> yeah, just do the frog. Just the NPC yeah, just the frog, Napoleon. Napoleon the wrong frog. NPC. It works. If it works, it works. <laughs> All right, I feel like now is a good time to slide over into our homebrew. Slide ah. over. Slide to the Lots of fun. Excellent. Dude, it's been too long since I've heard generic realm. <laughs> time to slime over to the homebrew. Ah, got him. Slime time. Got it. That was on our uh, gelatinous cube episode way back. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So, do you want to start or should I, Sam? I'll go ahead. All right. I bring to you screen. all the graveyard gum featured from oh. the Rudox Tower. Graveyard gum. Graveyard gum. Yeah. Wait, is that an ooze? No, it's a it's a tool. Oh, okay, okay, okay. If it wasn't also okay. like, oh damn, we really are sliming into the dome. Yeah, I like adventure. I, I love the way it looks. 
It looks interesting. I can't Did imagine. You play it on the screen? Oh, I can see it now. Oh, yes. I know Rudox Tavern. I follow him on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, Sam, I'm gonna you. I'm gonna step away just for a moment because yeah. my wife's been blowing up my phone. No right, problem. No problem. I'll go ahead and take. Wait, you want us to wait for you? No, no. You you got this, Sam. Okay. All right. So yeah, we've talked about Rudox Tavern before. I've featured a ton of their stuff. I always love to see just kind of like the little oddballs. I was scrolling through you know from Pinterest earlier, and I thought this seems interesting. Yeah, so no, this cool. clump of sticky taffy can be broken apart into 1d4 plus 1 separate skulls. Wow. Upon eating a skull, a user must make a DC 12 con saving throw. On successful save, the user is seen by any undead creature as if they were charmed by them, oh. regardless of immunity to being charmed. Hostile it's a action. literal gum that yeah. you can eat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Hostile actions against creatures under its effect and the effect for that creature. Oh, wow. So you you effectively become like camouflaged into looking like an undead for that. I guess. Wow, that's pretty cool. Like a Halloween candy or something. So. Yeah, the user also gains immunity to necrotic damage and vulnerability to radiant damage for one hour. Ooh. The user is also aware of any undead within a hundred foot radius of them at the Dang. start of their turn. Additionally, the user is able to summon up to 1d4 zombies or skeletons, which will follow simple commands and have their turn immediately after the user ends their turn. Should the user fail their save, they fall asleep for 1d4 hours, counting as a long rest, but may not be awakened in the interim by anything short of a wish spell. The mm -hmm. gum cannot be consumed for a full 1d4 days after. Okay. So you, you eat it, fail the save, you pass out. <laughs> like... <laughs> Yeah. You, didn't succeed. Makes sense. you are able to pass by undead unsuspected gain immunity to necrotic damage you know as Damn. if you were an undead and you become kind of a beacon and you can detect any nearby as well as summon some zombies or skeletons what's the energy pretty... on this one uh Man, it's, just, it's just rare Rare, but it is a consumable, right? So once you consume right. it, it's over. There are 1d4 separate skulls. So, so you can roll like, like a, you can roll low and just that. one. Okay, it's consumable. 1d4 plus one, yeah. So yeah. up to a maximum of five. And to a minimum of two. Makes sense. Yeah. Sam, you're, you're familiar with Auntie Bobble's candy shop. This, this <laughs> yeah. is going in there. Kelly gave me the same feel. I imagine she could sell this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Didn't you mention they were trying to like, was it you who mentioned they were trying to make like a? I don't know it was was another person. There was another guy that I know that was mentioned that they were trying to make like like a, a setting which is like a a grocery shop, like an interdimensional oh, grocery what? shop. Because it's <laughs> like interplanetary <laughs> taverns, the damn, right? The damn instant taverns. He was trying to do like a grocery <laughs> shop. <laughs> that, I'm pretty sure that's an episode of Star vs. the Forces of Evil. <laughs> it might as well be. <laughs> There's an SCP that's uh, the infinite IQ. Like, 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 like a grocery shop, like just like the, the, the modern ones that we see, but it's full of fantasy stuff, like an interdimensional that anyone can go like, you know. Yeah, I think that's kind of uh, loosely a part of what the Radiant Citadel was supposed to be. Oh! Oh, good like the Radiant point. Citadel is supposed to be like a little hub city in yeah. between all these dimensions with all these like little portals going all over the place. I'm pretty sure there are supposed to be cities like that just roaming around in the astral plane too. From yeah, what yeah. This spell. Oh, yeah that, that, that's essentially what the Radiant Citadel is, wow. more or less. So it's just like it's one of the books I have on my shelf. So it's like I, I, I use it from time to time. Oh, good to know that it's some use to be fine. But yeah, I really like this item. I was also thinking I could see like uh, this being like craftable, you know, like mm. something I kind of wanted to start thinking about is like mm. if I were to put this in my game and I was like, if someone wanted to craft something like what would be like the components, right? So I could see you using like, you know, obviously you need like a high power undead, you know, part. I would imagine you need like some type of gum, <laughs> like, yeah. get, like a ooze. Or something awesome. like that, you know? The it's crafting like, part as well, like that would be interesting, right? How would you make like, oh, how how are you gonna recraft this like yeah. horror candy that you found in the <laughs> right? I yeah, I imagine like a high powered alchem alchemist, you know, given the right materials, some undead, 
you know, bits, some like maybe an ooze or a slime or something. That could be some interesting. Necromantic. That probably sounds like it could be awesome. Yeah. yeah, it could be cool. Yeah, I like it. Something I would use does kind of have like a niche usage. Or it could be <laughs> just like a, a necromantic like character who just has this. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I like to chew on some gum sometimes. <laughs> that looks awesome. That looks awesome. Maybe like a substance that's like a kind of like comes out of certain like uh, undead creatures. Like, yeah. oh, got, got, oh, got you don't realize it's consumable initially, and they have to yeah. try and like, he had a random like. Like, uh, an unhinged <laughs> character to try like, get and just it, eat like it for clone. some reason, then it's like, no, yeah, yeah. oh, wait, it actually is consumable. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like someone on the road is like, oh, yeah, if you go kill those things, like, uh, you know, you might be able to get one of these things. Yeah, my boy don't get one, they pop it in their mouth, they're like, it doesn't taste that good, but let's just sneak by the undead or the unseen. They're like, oh. Yeah, like something you'd have to kill like an undead to get. But I think that'd be a fun idea. What did you All bring? Right. Well, I have the Void Touch spell. Ooh, I Ooh. love... All right, you know how much I love Void shit. And that like... sounds cool. <laughs> Yep, I, I, I'm all about like that kind of void. Like, I think the art for this looks nice. This is by Snack Daddy Games. Ooh, what a great name! God damn, right? And Snack it's for Daddy, right? I think we know who brings the snacks to his sessions. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so bring his snacky back. This is for sorcerers, warlocks, and witches. Uh, I'm guessing uh, mm. utilizing that uh, little probably a homebrew, class. right? Uh, one of yeah, their it's homebrew one of those uh, homebrew classes that you find on uh, what mm. is it? Uh, Drive through RPG. Yeah, I'm probably one of the one that they made, right? Most likely. Yeah, well, probably. So let's. I, I like the little thing they got up in the corner here. That's kind of cool. It's not that ah, spell. Yeah. <laughs> He's just like, oh, I know this guy. I've seen him on Reddit a lot, actually. Yeah. He posts some good stuff from time to time. I like the way he does the visuals. I I love his little character. It's really good. Yeah. Very good branding on his part. So let's see. Void Touch, Cantrip, Necromancy, One Hmm. Action, Range Touch. Components are verbal and somatic. It's instant. Make a melee attack against a creature within range. Well, melee spell attack. On a hit, the t- creature takes 1d6 psychic damage and suffers a penalty to its next attack roll or yeah. saving throw equal to the number uh, on the d6. Okay. Spell's damage increases by a d4 when you reach 5th uh, le- level, 11th level, and uh, 17th level. Hmm. That's unusual. Usually, a uh, cantrip scale by the initial uh, damage die. Hmm. 1d6 and d4, 1d6 and 2d4, 1d6 I mean, and 5d4. The, the text is a little confusing, but I think you should go by what is in parentheses. Oh, I see, right? I see. You should yeah. definitely go for what is in parentheses here. Both dice increase by one side. So the one 1d6 stays the same because that's the yeah. Oh, no. Only only six stays the same. Interesting. Yeah. Well, so at the very least, it should specify that. And yeah. the damage die, and then the additional... Uh, okay. One, two, three, that's an interesting mechanic. I could see that tripping people up here and there, but it it's simple yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. It keeps the... Uh, you can only, you know, get a high a six minus to a penalty roll, which is... Wait, wait. You know, one that, that seems like a good balance one? decision there. Yeah. Oh, I see. Because like it does the damage, and it's also a penalty to the saving throw equal to the number on the d6. I think it's a little unintuitive. Personally, I would just go, you take 1d6 damage, and then you roll a d6. Because if you do the tax like that, it's the same result, basically. But then you can just say, oh, okay, the spell's damage, which is a separate roll, increased mm-hmm. by blah, 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 blah. It'll probably be like... I get that the point is like, oh, the same dice you rolled to those two things. I get the, the, the intent behind that, which is like, oh, this is interesting. You just do one die yeah. roll, decide two different things. But it becomes a little like confusingly written because of yeah. that when you go to the mm-hmm. higher levels. Uh, I, I think I, it's I like one of those. Uh, for sure. Reminds yeah. me of Mind Deliver. 
Yeah, yeah it, it's kind of like trying. I, I think he was trying to idiot proof uh, the spell. Yeah. <laughs> it's more like, like okay. pedantic proof. <laughs> yeah, rules lawyer like, proof. <laughs> exactly. That way you don't have someone trying to break it because, like, ah, uh, yeah, he he must have play test this with a meta rules game rules proof. Lawyer. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, oh, uh, well, you see, the D6 I rolled for the penalty is actually this one. It's like, okay, so he's trying to eliminate that entirely as there's only one D6, the rest of them are D4s, and yeah, now that I look at it, the damage. very, very similar to Mindsleeve, but it's more like melee spell attack. Mm-hmm. I think it's good to give um, more like attacks like this that are cantrips yeah. that do more than just a little bit of I, you know, I would like it if the text allowed you to choose between a melee spell attack or a weapon attack similar to Booming Blade. Yeah. That would be cool because you could be opening it up to like Eldritch Knights and Paladins yeah, and stuff like true. that. I mean, Paladins don't really have cantrips if I know what you're taking, right? right? Multi-class things yeah. things. I, I could see that. But one of the cool things is it is a touch range spell, so you could channel that through a familiar. Oh! Really? That is a good point. That makes it more I'm also cool curious it. about it being psychic damage and not like oh, necrotic. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, necrotic or force. Oh, I guess I can see because if you're trying to think of void touch, it could go like for interpretation of like not astral, but like, uh, like space. far realm. Yeah. Psychic, yeah. Eldritch, Mind Flare. If you go to yeah. that kind of void, as in space, you know, astral and yeah. far realm and stuff, then it kind of makes sense to be psychic because it is yeah, the, it kind of, the main sense. psionic. Like it's damage messing with the, uh, the, the mental and life energies. That's you know? Yeah. If you go to that interpretation, that kind of flavoring, then yeah, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. I, I like it. It seems interesting. Void Dutch. That's cool. That's cool. I like I yeah. like the concept. Like you could probably do, probably use some tweaking. Something that I would definitely yeah. use. I feel like. the concept is solid. I think. Yeah, I would give this a Tonga. <laughs> <laughs> no, you would. And then yeah. he's got a, a Discord and Instagram. Uh, he's got a YouTube right. channel. Like it. Yeah, shout out to Snack Art Dirty by Mid Journey, and he's forefront about uh, using Mid Journey for his for his art stuff. There. Nice. Mm. Midjourney has been doing some really nice stuff lately. I've been seeing. As long as, like, as long as it's unmonetized and you're upfront about it, yeah, sure. A lot of people like take Midjourney and remove the background and integrate Mm -hmm. it into the document better. So there is at least some work there, you know. I like. Yeah, like a a lot of people use it in conjunction with like their photoshopping skills. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Uh, I did find one homebrew that I think you guys are going to very oh, much enjoy. Yeah. I think yeah, you guys yeah. are going to really awesome. enjoy this one. I went to my right. saved post on Instagram, and I, oh, okay, this is good, this is good. Uh, why do you guys right. want me to drop it? Yeah, you can uh, drop it right there in the general. Okay. Like I already have that pulled up. Like, check this out, bro. Check this shit out. All right, let's see what we got here. I love this one so much. Ooh, gelatinous polyhedra. Ooh. Like, it's a ooze d20, bro. Okay. It's a giant ooze d20. Oh, it's a monster. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's a slime d20, cool. bro. Oh, fuck. You can literally put your players against a giant d20 that can oh, fucking <laughs> eat them, bro. Oh, right, this is really cool. <laughs> I love it the, so I, The much. art looks amazing. Whoa, and by okay. crafting critical. Okay, okay. Critical crafting, yeah. <clears throat> crushing your all like I, I if you guys scroll Ooh. down you'll probably see my comment on it i said bro yeah oh yeah that i would roll a d20 20. like a physical yeah. d20 every time this thing moved on a turn and if i ever got that a would 20 be, yeah, i, I will have the ooze regain all his hit points <laughs> yeah i feel like the rolls <laughs> it gets to do a critical hit bro it That's gets too- to do it but hey you could also do like <laughs> if i roll d20 whenever it moves and it rolls on a one you can give it a penalty as well i would do both you know this is a d20 it's gonna happen critical hits aren't gonna be a thing you know oh for it's sure so fucking cool Dude, I that's a beefy so boy over 200 hp I mean, Crush, is bro, climb, bro, so it just, it's just a d20 rolling up the wall imagine that bro 
like a yeah, giant ooze in the toilet. Like just every, every like maybe one face it can like summon a skeleton, or like one face it like makes a weapon Ooh. attack or something. I don't know. I'm so I don't know. I yeah. just I just like, looked at this and I was like, really, that's like, genius. Mm. Take a d20 of your choices and make your own faces. It's Rolling like, and like, dull. Gelatin is Coob. Coob dice. Yeah. What if we make it a d20? It's such a right. simple And, and you could definitely take the idea that they like absorb things and they could just spit something out on, a, on like a dice. Yeah. Like rolling in golf, crushing roll, defensive. That's amazing, bro. That's so so it, its main shtick is being faster than your typical ooze. Yeah. yeah. Because it rolls. Yeah, yeah. Like if there was like a ball ooze or whatever, that shit would fuck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, mm. because I think like the ball, like, it, I don't know, it being a ooze kind of makes the, the, the ball image feel a little weird because yeah. it's still an ooze, it's still not solid. Right. So how how would the rolling actually work? But if it if an ooze can maintain the shape overall mm -hmm. shape of a cube, then it makes yeah. sense that it could maintain yep. the shape of a d20. And it being a d20, yeah. then I mean, it and absolutely it makes being the visualization that the image that is rolling out, you know? Yeah. Mm. Oh, I'm yeah. Absolutely. Uh, if I was running it, I would roll a d20, and then how whatever the number is, that's how many spaces I'll let it move. Ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe like one face and like cast haste on it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's perfect, actually. Like, roll a d20. Okay, 15. It moves 15 feet on the stir. That's amazing. Yeah. And if it, yeah, oh, that way it moves like... 17 feet, you could just round it out, like, to the next yeah. five section. Yeah, you know, so it's just oh, like roll seventeen goes yeah. to either fifteen or twenty, you know, something like that. Yeah, roll a two is like, oh, it only moves a couple spaces. This is, this is creative. Yeah. I like it. It's so it, cool. it's it's like if someone decided to give a gelatinous cube rollout. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I, I just I'm not a DM. I'm only a player and a home brewer. But if I this is the kind of stuff that I say because like, bro, if I ever DM, I'm putting this. I don't care what setting it is. I don't care what module. Uh, Save I'm, that I'm doing, but I ain't gonna find a way to put this on a combat at least once. Like, hell no. Oh, absolutely. It's cool. I like that. Really cool. <laughs> Ooh. I like to think of you like, okay, this like is a dungeon master's personal die. You know, this is God's yeah. dice right here. A giant fucking ooze D20 rolling around. Yeah. Uh, some of the text here is like living traps because of their ability to move at an incredibly fast pace compared to other oozes. Uh, they literally roll over their victims and it often they, they serves even as like, add like, dude, you can replace the, the ball they trap add lore. with one of these. It's not just yeah. a step, but they add this cool ass lore to help you integrate it into your setting. So fucking cool. Now, living this is that right here. Random. So you can like give your faces like random effects. Their movements are mostly random. Yeah, I love it. It's literally d twenty. It's completely fucking random, except when he wants you to fail. Then you're gonna roll like three, three, three natural ones in a row. Like yeah, the nearby yeah. wall. <laughs> <laughs> three ones in a row would get this thing killed because it's just staying still. <laughs> wow. When you put it like that. One die just like spins in place. <laughs> Flash. <laughs> Man, that's uh, crazy. I love it. It's great. I'm putting that in the description for first. Shout for sure. out to Critical. I thought you guys would, love, would like it. I, I, it's just, it's just such a simple like variation mm. of the existing version of it. But mm. such a like, how did no one think of this before? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you look at this, how did no one do this before, bro? It's so, you know, it, so perfect. It, it's like one of those things that it's always been there. Yeah, but now it is, you know. Yeah, man. And now I, that we have it, it's gonna feed so many more ideas. I love it. <laughs> I I want some of our listeners to terrorize their players with this. The kind of homebrew they inspire. They'll get hyped. I promise. Yeah. No, this, this this is the kind of homebrew they're looking to get hyped. Like that's fucking cool. I want to do that. I want to use that. If I was a DM, I would absolutely be doing. If you, I wish I had died. That's a terrible that idea. Was. Like a like a gelatinous cube dice, D20. Yeah, they don't be so still cool. call me and you could just use that die. You know? <laughs> That'd be so like, cool. You you did you guys hear what Plank uh, suggested? Oh. Like I in, actually missed it. What did he say? Like, like like he's saying that like dragon's dice. You just uh yeah. the players get dropped into a pit and like three of these things start rolling around. 
That's yeah, perfect. There's a reason we don't let you DM. <laughs> there is a reason you don't get to DM. <laughs> this oh, there are some ooze dices, actually. Like, physical. Oh, oh, I've seen some of those. Those are crazy. Yeah, you could just use that in place of a, of a mini for this thing. Oh, Honestly. <laughs> so the good. minis make themselves. Ooh, ooh, what that if you just take the stat block ooh. and you get an actual, like, dice size item that is just an ooze dice that, you can, that your character can throw and do stuff with it? That would be uh, so that, cool. That'd be something. That is how you start, man. That is how you start integrating into your campaign. I like it. Really yeah. flavorful, really cool. I love it. All right. So we're getting close to the end here. Uh, Kanemon, where can people find you? All right. Uh, people can find me on Reddit, Instagram, Ko-Fi. In fact, now I have a link tree. I can just link that. Hey, link tree. Hey. I'm throwing that in the description. Hey, there you go. Awesome. Look at that. Look at how cute it is. If you guys haven't uh, seen any of his homebrew, I highly recommend it. Hey, thank you. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. It was awesome talking with you guys again. Good to know you guys as well. Always a lot of fun time. Yeah, we appreciate it. I'm always posting like a new homebrew basically every week, if not every other yeah. week. Posting here on the server as well. If anyone is interested in checking my stuff I'm Definitely out. glad to hear you're doing well too. Huh? How was, um, I don't know if you, if Brazil celebrates like a 4th of July type of Oh, uh, but... yeah, Independence Day. I mean, not really. I think that one's mostly American. Mm -hmm. But we love seeing the, the stuff and obviously uh, <laughs> the memes. I know uh, my readers are memes. very, very into like soccer. We have a very stuff, big passion for memes. They've obviously. been they've been going crazy for the soccer. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm pretty much an anomaly when it comes to that. Because if I was How? more like my the rest of my people, I will I will live and breathe soccer, you know. <laughs> not even not even exaggerating, not even a little bit. I would live and breathe that shit if I was like a normal Brazilian. <laughs> I feel that like I'm not really into sports at all. Yeah. <laughs> not a sports ball guy. Yeah. I am not one as well. Absolutely. I don't I'm like, not, not wanting to get into the nerd stereotype, but goddamn, I'm a nerd stereotype, man. <laughs> I am uh, not about that. Our our jock cousins. The, <laughs> they do all the, the, the all the number crunching for just a whole bunch of uh, yeah, I did sports uh, in high sports school. Guys. I I, I, I would much rather play with my math rocks. Thank you very much. Yeah. I wish I, I would let my math rocks playing do the the sports athletics for me. <laughs> I mean, we got we got fantasy tabletop. They got fantasy football. It's like yeah. when you put it like that. Only one of them has it. I mean, Magic Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> like, imagine, imagine like the 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 Uncle Sam poster, but instead of Uncle Sam, it's like Vecna. <laughs> Vecna one, <want> you. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yes. Vecna no wants you to play with me so he can kill you. <laughs> See, that's the kind of uh, propaganda Watsi needs to be pushing. <laughs> they absolutely should. Yeah, I swear yeah. to God, that shit would sell like hotcakes. Like, that's I guess thing. we have what? to sell it for him. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. The, the one thing that I see a lot, I have a friend, which is also a content creator. His name is Hans Halfhaven. He's a Twitch streamer. Yeah. He does homebrew reviews. He does tabletop stuff. He's an amazing guy. And he's Ooh, we always him on the show. This. He's always, uh, you guys would absolutely, you know what? Yeah. That's a great idea. I'm going to talk to him and mention awesome, if he wants to do awesome. an episode with you guys. Because I'm pretty sure you guys will hit it off like hell. Hands is awesome. I'm sure. And, and the one thing that he's always saying on his streams, whenever he does like a homebrew review, and he, he frequently reviews my stuff on his stream. He's awesome. Mm. Like mm. the one thing that he says a lot is, the reason why homebrew is so popular for 5e is because a lot of the time it feels like what's he forgets the fun yeah. factor, yeah. the fun factor, you know, like oh, what, what, like what is it? The last two subclasses they released in the last three to four years: Path of the Giant mm -hmm. Barbarian, like Lunar yeah. Sorcery. Like, that's not that appealing. You want to know yeah. what's yeah. fucking appealing? In you know, fucking we Frankenstein that. Barbarian, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Now that's Not a right former there. race. Yeah, another yeah. robot race. Like the autonomes were awesome. 
You know? Yeah, like I feel like Tasha and, and Zanatar's <laughs> I feel like the Tasha's and Zanatar's book were the two actual fucking fun books that watched the release. Honestly. Like, you get like, How the fuck do you release Spelljammer without a single subclass in it, bro? It's literally Honestly, the space setting. Like, like how do you, you make got like, a setting with space clowns? hippos? How'd how you draw the bag? Bro, how do you make space clowns a thing, a canonical thing, and there's not a race for it? Do you know how Honestly. many people like to play with space clowns? Are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> like, bro, D and D is character options. The one thing that people love the most is character options. Watsy, where is your fucking character options? I don't want yeah. an entire new fucking book with just basic lore. That you get the, to just slap on the DM and say, "Hey, you make up the rest, bro." Are you kidding? That's that's a fucking glorified guide guide list for DMs to make their own setting. Where's the yeah. character options? Where's the meaty stuff? Where are the feats, the spells, the items? Oh, oh, oh okay, makes sense. That's what, what my dad was writing. saying when uh, he took a look at my copy of Spelljammer because, like, he's from back in the day when, like, they had the good Spelljammer. Yeah. <laughs> what is this shit? Like okay, now it makes sense. That that's why they do they weren't doing so much actual new content drops up because they were prepping for the new 2024 version in the last five years or something. Yeah, that's the rule was like actually going around, right? Exactly. Okay. Like they spent but so much time that's focusing the, that's on the case. making new D and D. Yeah. And then like and then when they did release uh spell jammer stuff, they they're like they spent half their time walking back the whole Hado Z thing. Yeah, like, like they're like, oh no, flying monkeys. People oh, are going to think gosh. we're racist. Now they're calling us racist because we made a yeah. race of flying monkey people. And it's like, just like, bro, I, 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 I roll my eyes so much. So much. I almost lost my eyes on so much, how much I rolled them. <laughs> so like, there's the thing. I want, okay, you're going to do new DD 2024, 2025, and beyond. Okay, okay. Okay, watch it. You finally did your own update. You want to go video game? Fine. Bring the fucking good stuff. If that's what you're gonna uh, do, yeah. okay. Bring the good stuff. I want to see. I want to see three new books a year. I want to see three new books a year, and at the very least, five subclasses or races or spell <laughs> sets in each one. I want you to actually work. I want you to actually write shit. Like goddamn, mm. in one year. The homebrew community pumped out 30 fucking times the amount of content they watched it in the last 10 years, bro. Honestly, they could just hire it's some funny. of these people. Just buy them out. It's not hard. It's like, bro, the, the main the main design team for Watsy pumps out the same content in one year that the homebrew community pumps out in a month. Yeah. And that's in not an exaggeration. Yeah. It's insanity. So Hans is always saying that we the Honestly, homebrew that community might be lowballing is what brings the homebrew back the community. fun. <laughs> like the homebrew community is what brings out the fun. You want to get good content for DD, you're gonna find it on the homebrew, you're gonna find it on the third party products. You're not mm -hmm. gonna find it on the official Absolutely. books. Absolutely. The official books are just a guide. They're just a yeah. guideline for you to run homebrew. Yeah. That's it. That's the truth. It's crazy. Yeah, like they gotta start feet. marketing that generic realm. <laughs> like literally, official is just a basis for you to run homebrew. That's it. Yes, yeah. it's really just the box. Yeah, and I just need the box to, to think outside of. Like as long as I got the box, I can. I, I'm good. I don't need the contents in the box. I'm yeah. throwing that away. You know, it's like a bike without without like without wheels. It's like a bike without wheels. The 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 official books are just the bike. The the homebrew yeah. is the wheels. Mm. That that's the wheels. That's, that's how you actually run the bike, bro. That's Honestly. facts. All right. I gotta talk I to Hans. I'm gonna see if he wants to be. Here. I, I think if it all works out and I get him mm. into the server, you guys are gonna love him. You guys are gonna love him. He's I'm I'm all in. <laughs> all right, Sam. It's been a it's been a time. It's been an episode, and. Everyone, you can find us at the Twitter at uh, the Nerd Militia Zero. Oh, yeah. We got the we got the Patreon and the YouTube and join the militia. Yeah, join the militia. Ask yourself what nerds can do for you. Watch Ooh. parties. Oh, that's cool. Mm. We just need people who want to hang out and join the the fun. Absolutely. Join us, guys. Become one of us. One, <laughs> one of us. <laughs> one one of us. us. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Hope you're glad we're back. We're glad to be back. 
back in black, baby. Back in black, baby. <laughs> Once you go black, you never go black. <laughs> <laughs> See y'all next week. <laughs> oh, if anyone wants to say that, it's you, man. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>